Hi guys, thank you for watching. Welcome to this video and to my channel if you're new here. My name is Debbie if you don't know me. Today's video I'm super excited for because it's a drugstore tutorial, two looks on palette slash kind of review on one of the new wildlife palettes from Barry M. So what I'm going to be doing today is the Rhino palette. So just a little bit about these palettes before I jump into the looks. There's been two palettes previous to the one that I'm going to be showing you today. I've already got a video which I did a look from each palette on when these came out last year. So there's already been this one, the Tiger palette, and that's the shades in the Tiger palette. So warm neutrals with a pop of green and a pop of like burgundy in there, super pretty. And there's been a Snow Leopard palette and this one's more cool toned with greys and blues and then this beautiful metallic pink in there to spice things up a bit as well. And I had such a good time with those palettes that I was excited to see that they've expanded the launch. So the proceeds of these palettes go to the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation, 20% of the proceeds. They retail for £7.99 and they're available on the Barry M website which I believe ships internationally and they're available in Superdrug. Now, the last time they were released, those two palettes that I've just shown you, they were a Superdrug exclusive as far as I remember. But now, as I say, they are available on Barry Amos website, which opens it up to, to more people being able to get hold of them. Although obviously you'll have the, the shipping to consider if you're outside of the UK. So I was so excited to see them branch out and to find two more of them popping up in, in Superdrug, which is where I picked mine up. So, as I say, today's one was with the Rhino palette and that's the shades in the Rhino palette. So you'll see them a lot more in action. I've used every shade over the two looks that you're gonna see, apart from the press glitter. There is a press glitter in the palette, which I'm not the greatest fan of and I'm kind of a little bit sad that they've put one of those in. I know people do like glitter. Don't think many people like press glitter though, so I'm a bit surprised to see them go down that route. But all the other shades which I did use, I've had a really good time with and you'll have my final thoughts at the end once you've seen the looks. Also with this one they brought out the Pangolin palette and I'd never heard of pangolins but they're the most trafficked animal because they're highly sought after for their meat and their scales, like the healing properties that they believe to be in their scales, which is super sad. It's an illegal trade, so they're trying to prevent that and that's what the conservation many will go to for this one. As I say, 20% goes to the animal of the palette that you're choosing. So if you choose the pangolins, it'll go to pangolins, etc. Inside that one, super bright, were you ready for that? <laughs> So all the others are, have been reasonably neutral or, or quite cool toned or whatever. This one is like so in your face and bright and I'm really here for that. I really can't wait to play with this one but that's going to come up in a future video. I did consider putting it all into one video as I did before but I wanted to do two looks with each this time and really show you what you can do with them. And I probably will at some point combine some shades and do a palette bingo from all four because I think that could be fun. But there's some interesting tones in this one. It's not just your typical rainbow palette. I love the way that the colour story has been put together. So super excited to play with that. But today's video, as I say, is all about the Rhino palette. So let's jump straight into the two looks and then I'll catch up with you at the end to give you a rundown of all of the shades and my thoughts on the palette. So I'm going to start in my outer V with shade Crash. And I've got a Morphe M321 brush to, to do that. I'm just going to build up the pigment in my outer V and my outer part of my crease. And then start working that across my crease but not too far. I've primed with the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. I didn't want to go in with anything like a white base or anything today. These are pretty pigmented shadows. I know from using the other two wildlife palettes that these perform pretty well and they're so impressive for a, a drugstore mat. There is a fair bit of kick up in the pan but you don't seem to get too much fallout on your face as you can see here. I'm not having too much trouble building up quite a intense outer corner there. I'm just bringing that into about 
two thirds of the way across my crease. And I'm going to take the shade Karafu and blend out above that with that shade. And that's working really well to diffuse that harsh edge actually. It's a good, good colour for that. This is a Morphe M506. Quite a good little detailed blending brush for this purpose. I'm just doing little circular motions just to try and get those two shades to mesh together. Just pretty much going back and forth between Crash and Kurufu till I've got the desired effect to my outer corner. I'm just going to take a fluffy brush and no additional product just to further blend that out up to my brow in the outer corner. I want this to be soft and blended. And I'm going to go back into Crash and just make sure it's super dark in the outer V. Next up is the shade Territorial and that's going to go in the inner part of my crease and right towards my nose. That's a beautiful pastel peachy shade. Not quite as pigmented as I expected while looking at it in the pan but it's building up nicely. And I think I find that quite often with drugstore eyeshadows they're more buildable rather than being pigmented off the bat. I mean that, that deep shade, the craft shade was pretty pigmented but this one it's nice, it's just taken me a little while to build up. But it makes them super easy to work with and blend out when they're this way, so it doesn't really worry me either way. I just thought it's good to point out to you guys. I want to bring that right in towards my nose and sort of a little bit high there as well, so that I've got quite a shade of peach in the look. I'm going in with NYX Glitter Primer to cut my lids but just on the front portion, so not once we get to the brown. And I've gone a little bit higher than my natural crease line to give me plenty of room for those shimmers to go. So I'm going to use the shade Horn in the centre part and I'm going to use the shade Hidden in the inner part. Pretty crumbly formula, I'm going to spray it as well as the glitter glue just to stop the fallout on my cheeks. Very pretty bronze shade though, very beautiful. So on the inner part I'm going to go in with the pastel blue shimmer hidden. I've just flipped the brush around, I'm going to use the same brush because that seemed to be working quite well for me. That's from Kaleidos Makeup, it's the S4. Oh, that's pretty. That's a really pretty blue. That's gorgeous, like an icy blue. And way, way prettier than it looks in the pan, I think. This brush is the perfect shape and size to get into the inner corner and be precise with it whilst also having enough grip to pick up shimmers. It's a really, really good brush, highly recommend. So when I get to where the bronzy shade is, I'm just going to tap just to kind of mesh those two together. Which I feel like with shimmers you can kind of ignore colour theory a bit and although brown and blue don't go in theory, you can make it work with shimmers I think a lot easier than you can with mattes. My waterline I'm going to go in with a Voya flush from Linda Halberg. I'm choosing this one because it's sort of a bluey green so I think because I'm intending to use some green in the lower lash line, but also I've got blue on the lids, I thought it might go quite well. At the very outer part of my crease, I'm going to use Crash. Kind of the middle part, I'm going to use Grays, and then I'm going to go into Rare, so that I've kind of used all of them except for the pressed glitter, which I'm not going to use. 
super beautiful that copper shade if that had been a, a shimmer then that would definitely have been in my look for sure but just not about that glitter life not pressed glitters anyway liquid glitters I can handle but I'm just so scared to get the particles in my eyes I'm just building up that brown shade the crush shade just in that outer corner and then I've cleaned off the same brush I'm going to go into rare with the Morphe E36 I'm going to spray it because it's a shimmer shade I don't want to get too much fallout and I'm not a fan of glitter glue on my lower lash line I've cleaned off the same brush and now into rare just to finish off my lower lash line there I think that's working nicely because it's echoing like the peachy kind of tones of that crease shade in the inner part it's got that like rose gold kind of feel to it these are so much more beautiful when you see them on the eyes and they look in the pan okay so that's look to this point just gonna hop off camera for mascara trace of black liner but not a wing and a lip for the look and i'll be right back with you to show you the look for look number one okay guys so here's the finished look for look number one I really love how it turned out. I think that peach in the inner part of my crease together with that shimmery icy blue on my lids is a really lovely combo. I don't really do that combo very often so need to play with that more I think. But I've paired the look with a liquid lipstick from Anastasia. This one's in the shade Hudson. Just thought it really matched the look well. And yeah that's the look for look number one all complete. So let's move on to look number two. For look number two with the Rhino palette, I want to use Crush again in my crease and outer corners. It's the only real deepening shade in the palette. But I want to make greys the focus of the look and I want to use Wallow as well. So I haven't used Wallow yet in a look. So kind of these three shades in this look. So I'm going to build this up in my outer corner and quite high up into transition area to try and get this to be quite deep and intense there. I do love this brown for being pretty pigmented, easy to blend but like literally zero fallout. It's really really good for that. So I'm just packing the colour down at the moment just to place it really as to where I want it to be and then I'll worry about blending it outwards and inwards as such but I want to keep this to a bit more of a rounded shape than I'm used to doing and I'm blending this just sort of in circular motions kind of packing and blending as I go and I've got the Mac Painterly paint pot as a base I've not set it so now I think I've got pretty much the level of pigmentation down that I'm looking for I'm just going to spend quite a bit of time just Blending that, getting a nice soft gradient on the corners and up to my brow there. So I'm not adding any additional colour now, I'm just really just blending out what is there. And now that I've got pretty much nothing left on the brush, it looks like it's coated, but there's nothing really coming off of the brush now. So I'm not dipping in again or anything, but I'm just bringing that slightly over. So we're going like two thirds of the way across my crease, I guess, with that now. And I'm keeping it higher than my natural crease. I'm not going right into there. I'm going a bit higher. But with this one, I do want it to fade out quite considerably. So I don't want a strong inner corner. Just going to swap brushes because I like a long brush. <laughs> I like to hold my brushes instantly quite low down so when I've got a, a smaller brush I feel like I've lost the control that I have if I've got a longer brush that I can you know you you can go a bit softer a bit lighter which obviously helps with blending if you've got a longer brush than if you're sort of here you tend to press a lot harder I'm going to take the tiniest little bit more pigment Going with NYX Glitter Primer, 
and I'm just patting that on. I don't want a cut crease line there. So I'm just patting that on just to give myself a bit of tackiness really on my lids. But I don't want to develop a harsh cut crease line there. So I'm just using patting motions. Now whilst that's still tacky, I'm going to go in with greys and that's going to go in that part of my eye and then I'm going to fade into the shade Wallow on the inner part. So to start with I'm just patting that and placing it where I want again and I'll blend it out in a beautiful shade that I'm going to take that a bit further than I thought I was going to. I was going to just put a little spot of this but I think it's such a beautiful green. It would go so well with the matte that's in the Tiger palette, I think, as well. For a drugstore palette, look at the shimmer and the colour payoff on that. These are just a step above what you normally find in the drugstore. I know I keep saying that, but I'm just so, so impressed with them. Right, so I've got the colour down. So now I want to work on blending that into my crease a little bit so that we've not got a harsh line. I find when I'm blending a shimmer up into the crease like little circular motions like this can help a little bit to kind of buff it in and bring it upwards. Now I've got that blend as I want it I can pack a bit more of that shade on and make sure we've not lost any of the intensity on the lid because obviously if you blend your diffusing the shade so we've lost a little bit of the colour payoff but that's fine now we've got that blend we can pack some more on and then for the outer corners I'm just going back in with a little bit of that crush shade that we started with and I'm just tapping over where that green shimmer meets just to make sure that we've got a bit of a blend there as much as we can and then for the inner part of my lids, as I say, I'm going to go in with Wallow. This brush looks as if it's got green on it, but it's just stained. It's a smudge brush from Real Techniques. And with that shade, I'm going to take it a little bit into my crease in that corner there. And onto my lid as well. It's not as shiny a... Uh, formula, not as foiled a formula as the grey shade but it's nice and brightening in that inner corner. So now I've got no product really left on the brush but I am just working on just blending that shimmer in a little in the inner corner towards my nose. Just want a matte brown so I'm going in with Brown Core by Linda Halberg. Okay, I've taken that in my waterline and I'm going to bring a false inner corner down with that liner. giving me pretty much of a feline shape in the corner there which I'm not hating. Taking that pencil under my waterline I'm going to quickly smudge it out before it dries down too much. So now we need to do is set that with the shade Crash and then I'll blend it out a little bit with Carafu. Just to really get a diffused sort of blend on this outer corner now I've got a massive brush this one is from Spectrum it's the BO3 just basically pressing that pigment in in the outer corner just to pretty much fade it out there. I think a beauty sponge could work pretty well for this as well but don't really use those so this was to hand and I thought it would probably work quite well. Going back into Wallow for a brow bone highlight now. I 
by taking Wallow in this little false kind of space in the inner corner that we've created. Just very carefully filling that in there. Okay, that's the look to this point. Just gonna hop off camera for a tracer of liner on my upper lashes. Probably use the same pencil, it's just much easier to do it off camera than on, because I've got to hold my eyelids down to do it. But I'll probably use brown core to do that. Mascara and a lip for the look, and I'll be right back with you to show you look number two. Okay guys, so here's the finished look. And I paired this one with a Velour Liquid Lipstick from Jeffree Star from the Holiday 2018 collection. This is the shade Triggered. I love this one, it's browny sort of purpley and I thought it really went well with the deep brown, that crash shade that's in my outer corners and on my lower lash line and that's creating this dramatic inner corner. Love this inner corner shape and it's been a long time since I did it. And I think for me, if I've got a neutral palette, I want to do something a bit more out of the box with it. So I wanted to have a bit of fun with this look and I really love how it turned out. So I hope you like it. My thoughts then on the Rhino palette, I think it's amazing quality for $7.99, so less than eight pounds. What's that, 10, 11 dollars if you're in the US. You've got nine shades, one of which is a pressed glitter. I didn't use that and I won't because I'm very nervous of using pressed glitters on my eyes. I don't think they are eye safe or any sort of glitter is eye safe, but that's not to take away from how beautiful that shade is because it is gorgeous. So if you do use glitter, I think you would like it and it goes very well with the rest of the colors. But I think even taking that away, I'm still only paying a pound a shade. So it's absolutely worth it. I think. The two standout shades that I really wasn't expecting to love as much as I did is Hidden and Grey. It's that icy blue in look number one and the green that's on my lids in this look are just so much prettier, so much more vivid on the eyes than they look even in the pan there. They're not like sparkly shimmers or foil shimmers, but they, they pack a punch and definitely for drugstore eyeshadows, they definitely are amazing quality. That crush shade, the brown, we've only got one really deepening up shade, but it's such a good shade. It blends out really easily, so you can you can alter the intensity of it with Carafu or Territorial, and you can make it go different ways. And I think by only having sort of eight shades or nine if you count the glitter, there's a lot of directions you can take this neutral palette in. That shade is beautiful, Wallow. It's got a kind of pink shift to it. And it's super pretty on the inner corner there and as a brow bone highlight. The two shimmers that are a fairly neutral, one's more warm tone and one's a bit cooler. They both have a bit of micro kind of sparkle to them. That one a bit more bronzy, that one more goldy. It's just such a good neutral palette and inspiring for being a neutral palette. So if you're into neutrals but you want to branch out into colour, I think this one would be great for you. Or if you're a colourful makeup lover like me, but you just want a splash of colour and you don't want a completely all neutral palette, it's equally good for you guys. So I think if you can get it in the country that you are without spending heaps of money on shipping, because I think if you're in the US, it would cost a lot to get it to you. But if you're in the UK, wholeheartedly recommend picking this up. I mean, just look at the artwork on it as well. And the fact that 20% of the proceeds is going to go to Rhino Conservation, that's just an amazing feel good feeling that you're doing something good as well as like buying an amazing product as well. So really, really love these palettes as you know. I've been raving about them since the first release with the Tiger palette and the Snow Leopard palette and I think this is of equally good quality. Love how they're all the same shape and size as well. So they're all, you know, developing a nice collection together. I just can't wait to see what else is coming. So that's it for the Rhino palette. I will be filming with the more colourful one, which is the Pangolin palette. So that'll be coming soon. But let me know down in the comments, guys. Are you likely to be picking either of these up? What do you think to the eye looks? Which was your favourite? I think for me, look number two that I'm wearing now is my favourite because I just love the drama of the inner corner there. That's my kind of vibe. But I really like both of them. Really had a good time playing with this palette. So thank you so much for watching guys. If you're not subscribed already, then I'd love it if you considered doing so. And hit the like button if you've enjoyed the video. It really helps me out. But that's it for this one and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.